Hello and welcome to a new episode. We are going to make a wavy pattern on some MDF boards in order to make drawer fronts or cabinet doors. Let's make a file that we can use very easily for any dimension of boards. As you can see, I've moved on to FreeCAD 0.22, it's a development version. I first have to go to the spreadsheet workbench, create a new spreadsheet, and I will give here some dimensions, board width, board length, board thickness, bit height, and bit diameter. These are all the dimensions that I need to be able to mill the wavy profile on any size of board. So let's give it a width of 600. I will use the one that I've already milled on the CNC, a length of 200 and the thickness of 18 millimeters, a bit height of 12.7 millimeters and a diameter of 19.05. This is half an inch and this is three quarters of an inch. And now let's go back to the part design workbench, create a new body, create a new sketch in the XY plane. Let's draw a rectangle this very nice feature here i can enter the dimensions unfortunately i cannot enter expressions here so for me when making parametric designs it's nice but useless now select the bottom line press on l to give it a horizontal length constraint press equal type spreadsheet length i forgot to add aliases so let's go back to the spreadsheet select the value field go to the upper right corner give it alias with the next one is length thickness bit height and bit diameter now edit the sketch select the bottom line press l press equal spreadsheet length no this should be width i want the lines to be along the length i will consider the bottom line as width i will just imagine the board oriented along the y axis select the vertical line of the rectangle press i press equal spreadsheet length and now i have the rectangle perfectly defined i will close the sketch pad it with a length equal to the thickness of the board press ok now i have the board defined so let's define the shape of the cutter bit for this i'm going to use the type of bit that i have already used in this episode in episode 21 you can see it on my channel and i will go here i have a sketch called bit shape press ctrl c on it and i will uncheck all these things and just copy the actual sketch click on ok close the file go to my file and press ctrl v you can see here the sketch i will press space to make it visible it's actually hidden in the body so let's hide the body you can see the sketch that defines the shape of our bit but there will be some errors because these values are referencing some fields in the spreadsheet from the other file so let's double click it press on equal it worked pretty well because i have the spreadsheet with the same name and the variable name is the same so it works let's check the diameter it's bit diameter naming variables consistently over time can help you a lot but i think it's better to double check it every time you do it let's go close the sketch you can see i have some problems with positioning of the sketch because the attachment is changed based on some values in the other file so let's just clear it clear this one also give them zero values and now i think there shouldn't be any more errors i will move this bit shape into the body and now make the body visible of course and i want to raise it in order to have this corner just at the top face of the board i will type spreadsheet thickness if i leave it like this you can see that it moved in a different direction because the x y and z of my sketch are modified it is attached to the x z plane i have to move to the x z plane you can see here in the right the xz plane is now horizontal just as the normal xy is and all the x y and z will change let's go back and change the z back to zero click clear press zero here this is actually the y when looking at it like this so i'll go to the y by just changing the value it moved as it should let's enter the formula spreadsheet thickness this won't be enough now it's completely outside of the board i want to lower it with this distance which is if i remember correctly from defining the bit shape you can see here in the right i have an equal constraint so this distance is half of the total bit height so let's go to the positioning and subtract the bit height divided by two now it is placed correctly you can see it just barely touching with this corner the face of the board so all i have to do now is make a pocket on the entire length of the board press the pocket button select type through all and click ok now i made the first part of the cutout but i still have to repeat it select the pocket go to linear pattern it's going to be a linear pattern on the x-axis and now let's repeat it the length is going to be the length of the board of course and the number of occurrences is going to be equal to the length of the board width 
actually it's kind of weird how I named them divided by the bit diameter you can see it's a 31 point 50 value it rounds up to 31 and it will leave a small space here between two consecutive passes i prefer to leave it like this with a very small space it's a two millimeters let's measure it i will close the pattern use the measuring tool tools measure select the first line select the second one it's 0 0.95 millimeters taking into account that this is going to be mdf it's a pretty small distance which can be easily sanded and covered with paint so it doesn't really matter if i would remove this small flat part on the top of the round over it will lead to an ugly end of the board let's go back to our design the model is ready what I still need to do is go to the cam workbench which is called cam in this version of FreeCAD it's no longer called path create a job and make the milling using the tool bit so select the body click on the new job button if you have a template select it if not you can easily modify the parameters here select a tool bit I'm just using a generic tool bit I don't really care its shape I just want it to move in the center of these channels because it doesn't matter if I define the correct shape of the toolbit as a custom toolbit, FreeCAD won't take that into account when creating the path. So I will have to work with what currently works. This is okay, I will just leave a normal straight end mill, click on OK. Now I have the job created and I will select the line on the left, which is the lowest point of the diameter because as you remember, we've placed the sketch of the cutter bit on the Y axis and with this line select it i will click on the slot operation click on apply and you can see the slot created i can modify the depth the step down the safe and clearance heights which i don't recommend modifying from here unless you're doing something special such as optimization of tool paths i will show you in another video the operation you can change multi-pass or single pass i will leave it a multi-pass because the cutter bit is not such a good quality but i want something else i want to extend the path start and the path and just a little bit because i want to lower the cutter head before entering the board this will leave a much smoother finish so let's extend the path i cannot enter a formula here so let's close the slot go to the operations group select it scroll down to the extend path and end start and here i can press equal to enter a formula so whenever you have that green checkbox when setting up an operation you cannot enter a formula there but after closing the operation you can select the operation in the tree view and scroll down in the data tab to find the variable that you want so let's extend the path and using half of the bit diameter and i will just copy this formula click ok and do the same for the path start I have a warning slot operation collides with model because my tool bit is a straight end mill it won't be able to do this round over when moving at this level FreeCAD believes it will mill part of the model which is not a problem so now I want to repeat this operation making a lot of slot operations would be very time consuming and it wouldn't lead to a parametric design so I will select the operation and click on this button to create an array now let's set up the array I will do the same as we did for the linear pattern is just that the array is a little bit different generated so what number of copies i will press equal spreadsheet width divided by the bit diameter which will lead to a 31.5 and it's rounded to 31 and now let's give it an offset on the x-axis this is the direction that i want to move it press equal spreadsheet bit diameter this won't work perfectly and we'll have to modify it a little bit you can see that it starts repeating and slightly moves it to the left for each of the passes that's because of this top flat line here so we have to make the offset a little bit higher let's go to the formula editor we'll leave the b diameter of course and i have to add that small difference that small difference is generated by having the total movement which is the width of the board and i will subtract from this the actual movement this will leave me a small amount of the end which i'll have to divide then by the total number of passes so how do i calculate the total movement it's the bit diameter multiplied by the copies of course i can reference by simply typing copies it's the copies field in the array operation i have made a mistake here in writing with so let's modify it and then i will divide this difference to the total number of copies because for each copy it will add that little bit which in the end will result in the entire difference so let's divide it by copies 
click on ok now you can see it's 1935 you can still see that it's shifted because the number of copies should be what i've calculated already here but subtract one because the array in the cam workbench excludes the first operation the one that we are going to copy so i want a total number of copies equal to the formula that we've entered earlier the width divided by bit diameter and i will subtract one the initial copy the initial slot operation and now it results in a value of 30 for the copies the offset on the x also updated because we are using this value and now you can see that each pass is right in the center of each channel so now that everything seems to work let's make some tests let's go to the spreadsheet and modify some values let's first modify the length 800 and if i go back to the 3d view you can see that everything is okay let's go and modify the width let's give it a value of 300 make sure everything is okay change this again let's give a greater value of 500 you can see everything is messed up because i was referencing this line here which is generated in the linear pattern and each time i change the width the number of iterations of the pocket modifies this means the naming of the edges and of the faces modifies so it's not a good solution you can see that actually even the height the final depth is modified because the line that i was referencing now is a total different line let's go to the slot operation you can see in the base geometry this is now the edge 191 which initially was the first edge of our board the solution that i found for this is to reference this edge this is the edge of the stock the stock is always the same shape so let's go to the base geometry remove the edge 191 select the edge on the stock click on add and now this edge will always be the same we still have to modify the depth click on the formula as you remember when creating the 3d body it's spreadsheet thickness minus bit height divided by two click on apply now everything is back to normal let's just close this and double check let's make the board with higher 600 everything is still where it should be let's make it smaller 200 everything is working just fine let's also modify the height of the board give it a thickness of 40 everything move accordingly so using the edge of the stock was the solution in this situation of course i could have used additional geometry a line a datum line to reference it but i think it's useless since i already have something that follows all the criteria that i need it's the corner of the stock so this is the model let's go to the cnc and mill it see how it looks in the end Of course I still have to paint it which is not an easy process on MDF but I certainly won't be talking about that in this video. Thank you for watching and see you next time.